The NSA released a major security warning detailing a state-sponsored attack led by China on critical U.S. infrastructure. Infrastructure so critical, in fact, that U.S. senators were recently given new satellite phones and special training to learn how to use them. This is all happening while China is flying spy balloons over mainland United States and preparing for a new, apparently pretty bad, strain of COVID known as XBB that is evidently flying around China now. And before we read this NSA brief, the details details the state-sponsored attack and exactly what is happening here. And before we look at this new strain that is evidently flying around, let's get some background on these hackers from Microsoft. CNBC is reporting that Microsoft warned on Wednesday that Chinese state-sponsored hackers had compromised, critical, their word, U.S. cyber infrastructure across numerous industries with a focus on gathering intelligence. The Chinese hacking group, codenamed Volt Typhoon, has operated since mid-2021, Microsoft said. The organization is apparently working to disrupt actively critical communications infrastructure between the U.S. and Asia, Microsoft said, to stymie efforts during a, quote, future crisis or maybe the pending hot war. The NSA put out a bulletin that we're going to read. The attack is apparently ongoing, meaning they have not stopped it. In the advisory, Microsoft urged impacted customers to close or change credentials for all compromised accounts. U.S. intelligence agencies became aware of the incursion in February around the same time that the Chinese spy balloon was down. In a briefing on Thursday in Beijing, a spokesperson for China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs dismissed the report and said, it's filled with disinformation, asserted the U.S. is the champion of hacking. The spokesperson also claimed that the report was part of a coordinated campaign from the Five Eyes countries to go against China. Now, the infiltration was focused on communications and infrastructure in Guam and other parts of the United States, particularly alarming to U.S. intelligence because Guam is the heart of the American military response in case of an invasion of Taiwan. Volt Typhoon is able to infiltrate organizations using an unnamed vulnerability in a cybersecurity suite called FortiGuard. Once the hacking group has gained access, it steals user credentials from the suite, tries to gain access to other systems. It says the state-sponsored hackers aren't looking to create disruption yet. The threat actor intends to perform espionage and maintain access without being detected for as long as possible. Now, this is what came out from the NSA. It says that People's Republic of China and their state-sponsored cyber actor are living on off the land to evade detection. Brief summary, the cybersecurity agency CISA, CSA, highlights a recently discovered cluster of activity known to be associated with the PRC called Vault Typhoon. Identifying this affects critical US sectors. Advisory comes from a number of different countries. And one of the actor's primary tactics, techniques, and procedures is called living off the land, which uses built-in networking administration tools to perform their objectives. So once it's in, it doesn't need Need to create any new code or use non-native code. It's just using the tools that are already available to it, living off the land, living off the code. This allows the actor to evade detection by blending in with normal Windows systems and other network activities, avoiding endpoint detection and response. Other items would alert the host, hey, there's a third-party application here, but it's not really doing anything. This actor uses, if you're a Windows super user, WMIC, NTSD, Util, NetSesh, and PowerShell. The advisory provides examples of the actor's commands along with detection signatures to aid them in detecting this. Many of the behavior indicators included could also be legitimate system commands that appear to be benign, so hard to detect. Care should be taken to not assume that the findings are malicious without further investigations and indications of compromise. So in other words, don't start hacking apart your system until you know it's actually bad. Don't just assume that if something's doing a thing that it's the malicious actor, it might be just you. Don't start deleting all your files before verifying this. And this report goes on a lot more in depth and a lot more to it, which of course we will fast forward through, but you can see they've done some deep dive on this and apparently it's quite a sophisticated attack. Now to deal with this, senators have been issued satellite phones and offered demonstrations on how to use them. Wonder if that was useful. Amid growing concerns of security risks, over 50 senators have been issued satellite phones for immu emergency communications. The devices are part Part of a series of new security measures that are being offered to senators by the Senate Sergeant at Arms, who just recently took over. Satellite phone technology been offered to all 100 senators. At least 50 have taken them. In testimony before the Appropriations Committee, the Senate Sergeant at Arms, Karen, uh, communications say we're being deployed to ensure a redundant and secure means of communications during a disruptive event. Just said the phones are a security backstop. A Homeland Security Advisory said satellite phones are a tool of response 
funding in case there's a man-made or natural disaster that wipes out communications. Uh-oh. Gibson has also opened an office as a demonstration space in the basement of the Russell Senate office building. Good Lord. Imagine trying to show Senator Fetterman how to use this phone. Be there for a few months. In her testimony before the Senate panel, Gibson reported, our team provided initial physical security enhancement for 31 offices, and so they're beefing up security. And the situation with China continues to escalate. Apparently, there is a new wave of potential cases percolating over there due to an XBB variant. Washington Post is reporting this one. It says Chinese authorities are rushing to push out the jab to fight an ongoing new wave of the vid expected to peak in June and infect as many as 65 million people a week as the new variant evolves. Apparently, overcoming immunity built up in China because they had the COVID zero policy. One of China's top epidemiologists said Monday, the new jabs will address the new variant and the United States is monitoring accordingly. So that's very exciting in China. Now the Epoch Times said that this is not just isolated and limited. CCP prevents a grave threat to the United States. That came not from the Epoch Times, but from a DHS official saying Beijing presents an especially grave threat to the homeland. Not only are they hacking systems, flying spy balloons overhead, they are also infiltrating the government and creating their own law enforcement police agencies around the country. We must match our adversary's determination through a whole of government response. He says DHS needs to play a leading role. They can't even ban TikTok. They can't even deal with that. But the CCP regime operates globally. It's using all instruments of national power to target the United States, including now hacking our infrastructure. And we'll see if the U.S. government does anything about it. He says the U.S. in response must mobilize a whole of nation defense against the aggression. And so the hot war with China continues to develop from a cold front to a hot front as World War III seems like it's around the corner. <laughs>